Hi, everyone, and um, I'm very excited about uh, this interview with Curtis Harwell. He's, um, he's actually my cousin. Um, you may not know that I'm related to someone so uh, famous, but, uh, but this is the, uh, the Curtis Harwell. Um, so so um, Curtis has done a whole bunch of stuff, and, and he's, um, uh, um, he's always a really inspirational person so, and, and just really, um, re really interesting to talk to. So, so, well, actually, I know you're really interesting to talk to in person, but I'm, hope I'm, I'm hoping that like through a video call that you're also interesting to talk to. Oh, and, and, and Curtis, um, Curtis has this project called the Gathering of Lights Project. Um, that um, that I thought we could talk about. So so that's kind of my like rough introduction. Um, any um, anything that I missed? Any any other introduction things that I should have um, said, Curtis? Well, yeah, I have a list about this long that I'm going to share with your audience here about things we've accomplished up to date. Um, I've been a life coach, motivational uh, life coach since 1991, and my interest is in helping people move forward solve problems, create vision uh, and clarity, and uh, remove obstacles between where they are now and where they want to be. So I've been helping people along that path. And I took a 10-year hiatus and went to California and traveled up and down the coast and uh, did some deep meditation and, and, some, and taught some classes and met a lot of interesting people at, at different gatherings. And, uh, I was uh, motivated to write a book. Uh, in fact, your dad got me started writing this book. He did a symposium one time at the Boise Library and asked me to do a speech on the gathering of lights. So that's where it originated. And so I, I came up from California and I gave this presentation. And it was one of the best presentations I've given on on what happens when good people come together to create positive change. And this gal says, uh, would you like to have a copy of that speech? It was really good. And I said, I would, but I didn't record it. She said, yeah, but I did. So I took the recording of the speech I gave, listened to it. I thought, well, there's some good stuff in here. So I'll, I wrote it all down. And it started off with 19 pages of condensed material from this speech I gave. And then uh, over the, the next 10 years, it developed into this book uh, called The Gathering of Lights, The Next Step in Human Evolution. And uh, meanwhile, I've moved back from California and lived in Boise, Idaho for a while. And now I'm in New Plymouth, Idaho, and uh, doing a lot of things on Zoom and going ahead with this gathering of lights project. Well, wow, so that's uh, so that's cool. So how many how many pages did you say the gathering of lights? Um, book oh, has? well, it's evolved into 18 chapters and 275 pages. Wow. So, so is, this, is this like available on Amazon or 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 do you get it through through you or how just, just how can get I it through me? Get it through me and you can you can order it at uh, Curtis Harwell at MSN.com and I'll get you a copy. It's 20 bucks plus postage. And uh, it goes into everything from, well, here are a couple chapters. Uh, how death is an enemy, the last enemy to be overcome. Paul talked about that in the, in the New Testament and how we are misprogrammed by outside sources to believe and think a certain way, especially by the media. <clears throat> the media has a very strong pull on the consciousness of humanity today in a, not always a, the most positive way and people are often duped into believing what they hear through the news um, with a bias. And many of us are programmed to believe a certain way like, oh, you know, my dad, my parents died at 70, so I've, you know, I don't think I can live much longer than that. Uh, that's a bunch of hooey. Uh, just because one person does something doesn't mean you have to follow it, you know, like a, like a herd of lemmings going over the cliff. I talk about that in this book. Um, today's scientists talk about longevity. 
they've discovered that in every cell in your body, you have two sets of death genes and they can be eliminated. And when they are, the cells become immortal and they've proven this. So the question is, how do I deactivate my death genes and activate longevity genes or immortality genes, which are also in every cell that programmed into your DNA? And this book goes into the, those topics and, and how, how to actually extend your life by, um, by activating different genes, genomes in your system. Um, the eternal nature of our being. Now, some people believe in reincarnation, some don't. Uh, I say, well, it doesn't really matter if you believe it or not, just make the best of where you are and live in the here and now and do, do the best you can with what you've got. Um, but even after death, your spirit lives on. And my belief is, even if I were to pass over and shed, and shed this mortal coil, I wouldn't want to stay dead with all the technology going on in the world. I'd, I'd somehow look down there and say, yeah, they've got flying machines now that I can operate like the Jetsons. They've got all kinds of new technology. I, I want to get involved in that. So I'd probably want to come back down and get a new body, new experiences. So I talk a little bit about that in this book. Um, who and what is God? I go into that. Everything from the cosmic level, universal level down to the planetary level, who's the God of this world? Uh, and then how the, the power of God is within each person. You know, the, the kingdom of God is within you, said Jesus. So what does that mean? Well, that means there's some divinity in all of us, and even in you, Joseph, you've, you've got God in you. Did you know that? Wow, that's, uh, that's, that's good to know. It is. It is, so you, you can trust that. And if you learn to trust that, then your inner light grows. And as your inner light grows, you want to connect with other people whose inner light is also growing and are, we become more illuminated and like attracts like, and pretty soon you have good people that are connecting. And uh, that's what the gathering of lights is, is that all good, all people have a level or a measure of light within them. And when this light connects with other lights, uh, we have power to change the world and change our own lives in the process. Cool, um, that's, a, uh, that's a really interesting summary for the, for the book now. Uh, now I want to order one. Um, so so do, you, do you ship to Thailand? Uh, let's see. I have to look at my range here. It's about two thousand miles. Are you? You're not farther away than that, are you? Uh, I think it's like five or six thousand miles. I don't know. I might have to read it to you. You know. You know <laughs> yeah, what I do have. I. I'm going to send it to you on. I have a PDF file. It's okay, on cool. PDF. I'll just zip it right over to you on your email, and you'll have it in minutes. The whole book. Cool. That's uh, that's awesome. So so that's really uh, that's really cool that she uh, she recorded it for you. Uh, um, are, are you still in contact with the original recorder? No, that happened back in eighty eight, nineteen eighty eight. But oh, you know, was, it wasn't. Huh? That was a long time ago. Yeah, yeah, it was a long time ago. <laughs> but it was a magical time. I and uh, uh, I met. Uh, a lot of really nice people interested in in metaphysical philosophies and and uh, a lot of them came to that gathering that your dad put on and I helped him with and, and uh, it was a lot of fun. But that was the beginning of this book and uh, since then I've published 60 articles in the local paper if you can believe that. Oh, um, and, and which, uh, which local paper? Well, it's called the New Plymouth Record. And uh, when they were opening, I went in and I said, you know, I'd like to be, I'd like to have a little section in your paper called the coach's corner. And because I'm a life coach and I'd like to, you know, print, have you print some articles that I write. And they said, well, print us up an article and we'll see if we like it. So I did and they liked it and they printed it and it's called Life Takes Sand. 
and that means you got gumption or grit. You know, you can roll with the punches, and and sometimes in life you you, you end up in a sand trap, like it looks like equate it to a game of golf, and you end up in a sand trap. But you have to play from there because you know that's just how where life has taken you. So there are no shortcuts. You just play from where you are with what you've got and and get out of your own sand trap. That was the first article I wrote. And then I wrote articles on, you know, how to put a positive spin in the world you're in. Kind of thing. All motivational, spiritual guidance in material. Wow, that's, so that, uh, that, yeah, that's awesome. And, and you've you published over 60 of them? Yeah, they printed 60. Wow, that's that, that's really cool. So, so have you have you compiled um, those articles together in like in like a book format or? Pretty much, I have them in different folders that I send out. Um, I can send you one too. Cool. Yeah, yeah, that would be awesome. And anybody else who wants one, I'll send them to you. No charge. Just let me know, and and they're uh, I don't know. So they're they're witty, and there's some humor in them, and there's problem solving ideas and and keys to relationship building and all kinds of stuff in them. Stress release, I had 29 uh, techniques for stress release for anyone who's feeling stressed. Helps you overcome stress, worries, woes, anxieties, tensions. And again, it's all about trusting. You know, this is where I'm at, but where I'm at has a beginning, middle, end, and, and I have to see beyond any problem that I might have created for myself. So, you know, motivational stuff like that. So, so the, the topic of that first one seems a little bit depressing that like whatever you've got, you just have to deal with. Um, is um, it, it, it probably actually wasn't really, the, really depressing though, right? No, you know, there's nothing depressing about, about uh, rolling with the punches about, you know, I mean, you have to look at your life. You'll find that 70, at least 70% of it is positive. You might have a few issues here and there, maybe relationship, financial, social, whatever, whatever is up. We all we all go through trials and, and learning growth experiences, but even then, most of your life is positive. And if you learn to be thankful for what you've got and show gratitude for what you've got, uh, then you're further ahead and that'll get you out of the sand. At night before I go to bed, I always say, uh, I have a little mantra. And it's simply, thank you, God, thank you, God, thank you, God, for the day and for everything. Even the things that you might construe as negative, but they were like, God threw you a learning curve, you know, learn from it, accept it. Okay, next. Always another day. <laughs> cool. That's a, uh, that's a really good way of looking at things. So, um, so, so one of the things I want to talk about is you, um, you, uh, you being a life coach, and I, um, I've noticed that, uh, I've noticed that with uh, one of the things that like when, uh, whenever I talk to you, um, after after I talk to you, then I think, huh, um, my my perspective changed a little bit. So, so, so I'm not sure if, um, I'm not sure if that's something that, that that you do as part of your life coaching is is help people to slightly adjust their perspective or. Uh, or if that, or if that's just um, just my experience with you. Well, I appreciate that. Yeah, you always want to change or shift your perspective. I mean, that's what growth and evolution is all about. The thing you thought yesterday, you find out. Well, I don't really believe that today. Uh, or the limitation that I had yesterday, I've overcome it. So you're constantly expanding your your mental parameter uh, in. Um, in metaphysical terms, that's called a ring pass knot. And so you're expanding your mental periphery where you one day you don't accept an idea, the next day you do. One day you're a Democrat, the next day you're not. But we won't go into too much into politics. But uh, yeah, you know, it's about shifting your perspective, uh, the way you see life. And what I do as a coach, I help people create vision you know, where would you like to be? What would you like to do? Uh, if you don't like what you're doing uh, occupationally, what would you like to do to change it? 
where would you like to be? So you create a vision. Remember the scripture where there is no vision, the people perish. So you have to have a clear vision. <clears throat> That's the top of the mountain where you want to ascend, what you want to uh, be. That's your future. And then you set goals. And a goal uh, is a concept where you have, a, it has a beginning, middle, and end. Uh, it's a step toward my vision. So this step, let's say, let's say you, you're, you weigh 400 pounds and you'd like to, your vision is to be 250. Well, a goal would be to lose five pounds in let's say the first week and maybe three pounds a week after that. That's a goal. A goal has a time frame. It has a, a date, a deadline. Um, so you have to have a, a time frame and an objective. So you set a goal and then what's your plan? You have to have a strategy plan. If you wanna lose weight, what are you gonna do different? doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. That's the definition of insanity, remember? So you have to do something different. You have to get on your treadmill, your rebounder, and check your diet. Okay, so you have, you have a, a strategy plan, game plan. And then you have to be able to measure results. Well, at the end of the week, did I lose five pounds? Or am I thinking younger? Or am I making more money? Or Am I in a better relationship with the people I care about? So that's what a life coach does. He helps people create vision, goals, strategy, and results. So how um, how did you how did you get into life how did you get get into life coaching? Was it uh, was it kind of an accident? Like somebody said, "Hey, hey, Curtis, um, can you help me out?" And then. Uh, and then you just, like, or, 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 or what's, uh, uh, what's, uh, what's the story of, of how you became Pretty much. A Pretty much. Um, back in, in, oh, well, as I was traveling up and down the coast, I was formulating in my mind, what can I really do to help people? And I, I read a lot of books. I met a lot of interesting folks along the way. I took a lot of classes. Uh, one in particular was called Nexus, where you learn to live in the here and now uh, and how most people set up their lives so they get to not confront. They don't confront what's going on within them, within themselves. They, you know, they run and hide from issues and other peoples and other people and whatever. So I thought, well, I'm gonna to put together a program that will help people live in the here and now and be present in, in their life. And if they don't like their life, I'll help them change it. So as a gradual process, and then in 91, I left California for a while and came back to Boise and I opened up a success studio. And I thought, well, I'm gonna put these ideas into practice. So I, I took all my ideas and wrote them down. And, and in, in, I have this book, it's about this thick on, on my coaching material. And it is, you know, it has everything from uh, defining my life's purpose, creating the ideal image of myself, setting goals, uh, motivational stuff, all kinds of materials, about three inches thick. So for anyone that wants, uh, that needs a life coach, here I am, I'll help you out. And, um, the way I charge, you know, a lot of times it's just send me what you think it's worth. It's, it's a spiritual endeavor. And uh, so I'm, I'm not big on the money part. I have other ways of making money besides that. But yeah, I kind of just developed it along the way. And and I'd get ideas. I'd get, aha, I'm going to write about, write uh, how to connect with other people. Uh, what do I have here? Okay, here's one. Here's just one segment. Deepen, it's called Deepening Friendships. Creating my personal support system. You know, most people feel alone in some, at some level in their life, so they need a support system. You know, like geese fly together in a, in a group because they, they go further on the lift of the person in front of them. So sometimes we can help each other clear our path. So... What you do is you, you put yourself in the middle and you, you write the names down of six other people that you'd like to connect with. 
and you create your own support system and you find out about them. It comes with a questionnaire. You find out what your friends, goals, talents, resources are and, you know, what you can do together and, you know, have some fun with them, take them out to lunch. Pretty soon you've got a support system and you're not alone anymore. You have a support system. You have a support. Oh, that's um, that, uh, that's a really uh, that's a really really cool idea because I have um, and and I think it applies in like a lot of different things because like like a lot of times I'll have an idea um, and 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 even though I have a good support system I might not have a good support system for like some some new direction that I'm going on and 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 that's a cool uh, uh, that's a cool way to, uh, that would be a cool way to get a um, get a support system or like. Like help 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 my existing support system like gear up for a for a new idea that I have. So so that's a really really cool idea. Yeah, and it can be a, you could have a project. Let's say you have a project of uh, you, you want to uh, you have a brother that's a kung fu master. Yeah, yeah, um, and and that's that's actually his his exact title, Ramsey Dewey Kung Fu Master. <laughs> really, <laughs> I didn't know that. Uh, well, okay. So let's say you want you want to have an idea that you want to be a, a a teacher of martial arts, and you don't know where to start. Well, you need a support team. So you create a project support team. You find you meet other people that are further along that path than you are, and you you pick their minds and find out what they did that that worked, and you know you copy their formulas you want and you get them on your team and, and and then you get maybe you need some money so you find somebody to help finance it and pretty soon you have a project support team and your project moves forward much more easily than if you try to do everything yourself and reinvent the wheel so you know teamwork makes the dream work we've heard that before and and it's true so you know create your own team whether it's personal or or financial or social so, so do you have um, do you have do you have some other things like that that you can um, share with us? Like, um, yeah. like. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I do. Um, we, uh, we in this gathering of lights project. So you know, you don't just start off by bringing a hundred people, or like um, George Bush said, a thousand points of light. You know, will change the world. Well, he's right about that. Uh, but what we're doing is we're creating small groups like triads. And uh, so I wrote an article on triads. It's called Triad Formations, the next step in human evolution. And so we get people, preferably couples, you get three couples together and, and they discuss whatever, you know, uh, ideas, philosophies, what's going on in their lives. And, and whatnot. So we have uh, a group that I'm involved with. We meet every Thursday evening, except today is Thanksgiving, so we probably won't meet tonight. But uh, every Thursday at seven o'clock, we do a Zoom, and there are supposed to be three couples, but we have five of us, so we have kind of like a pentad, I guess, and uh, that's a word. And we we connect we talk about whatever you know what were your wins for the week you know what did you experience what did how would how did your week go um did you come across anything that you'd like to share and then everybody oh i did i did so we talk about philosophies and maybe you read from a section a paragraph of a book that has stimulated us or motivated us um maybe we were effective in, in uh, a project during the week. Like I went to my dad's place in Blackfoot and came back with 24 bushels of apples. So I'm giving them away to people. You know, I'm, I haven't had the paper to sell them, but I can't let them go bad. So I put them in bags and give them away. And, and people are really appreciative of that. And I don't charge them. I just say, hey, you know, Merry Christmas early. So uh, whatever you're doing in the community that's raising consciousness or being of service, uh, we share that. And then, you know, what do you want to make happen next week? Well, let's see. I'd like to read uh, 
20 pages in this book. So we do some, or whatever. So we do some goal setting. And then we meet the week after every week and talk about it. So it's about small groups getting together. And your dad um, has a class every Sunday that uh, where we do a, a meet and greet and does a 15 minute meditation. And then he teaches a class. And he's teaching out of this book. Um, he has a book it's called Molecular, The Molecular Relationship by J.J. Dewey. And you'll see the little molecules that form here. And, and basically, uh, we're moving into what we, we feel is the next step in human evolution. And it's a principle. The next step principle is sums up like this, wherever you are on your path to enlightenment, there's a next step. There's something that you need to do or learn or to grow, to expand that ring past knot in your consciousness through some experience. So you always have a next step. And once you take that step and you go, aha, I, I'm, I'm, wow. I, uh, for some people it might be to get married, for some people it might be to advance in their in their work or their business. Well, just like people have a next step, humanity has a next step. And you'll see that people are becoming more and more group conscious. Like with this uh, COVID-19 pandemic, how many times do you hear the, the catchphrase, we're all in this together? You know, so it's creating this togetherness um, idea or push towards let's Let's team up and overcome this, this uh, debacle. So the next step in human evolution is for people to come together on some level. And, and what we're doing is really a very advanced part of it is uh, creating a human molecule. Have you ever, and I don't know of any group out there that, that has this uh, idea that uh, People are like atoms. In fact, uh, the word ADAM and ATOM are very synonymous. The, um, a human atom or a chemical atom, you'll see that there are a lot of correspondences between the two. And people have a tendency to want to come together. And we're going to form, take people and as components into this molecular construct and create this human molecule. And ideally, this molecule, once it's created and, and people have come to a closer association or emotional, mental proximity, they'll generate powers that they didn't have as unattached particles. You want to look at it that way. And um, the only other example we have of the power that's generated in a, in a molecule was Jesus. And he had his 12 apostles and that was a molecule. And then he was connected to one greater than himself, than himself, who was part of a molecule. And so that power, kind of like an electrical current going down a wire, passed into him and through his apostles. And you remember, they did incredible miracles. They walked on water, turned water into wine. I'd like to be able to do that with coffee. Matter of fact, that'd be great. But anyway, um, so... Um, turn turn coffee into wine or turn water into coffee anything anything you know you're a, you're, a, you're a divine alchemist at this point but um they they healed the sick that was one of the the greatest blessings that they had was to take people and uh eliminate any ailments or or sicknesses that they had and it was all based on belief you know if you believe you can walk? Do you believe I can heal you? Do you believe this or that? Um, and the belief was the key. The belief was the key. We could talk about that for another hour. Uh, how when the apostles stopped believing, they lost their power. And then when they started to believe again, uh, after the resurrection, they got their power back. So, so there's a lot of power that could be generated through the gathering. Yeah, that's um, that's that's that that's interesting stuff. So, so one of the uh, one of the things I want to do um, before we talk about that more is go um, go back to when you were. Uh, um, I think um, you said you made a studio. Um, I can't remember the name of it. Um, it was Success Studio. 
on success success studio so so one of my uh, one of my questions is uh, um cuz obviously now you're you're a lot more honed and fine uh, fine tuned um, um, ba um back uh, um back then you were you, you were probably like trying out trying out a bunch of ideas um so 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 i'm wondering what uh, what, what did you find what do you what did you find early on with success studio that, that worked and then what what didn't work uh well what worked what worked was showing a real interest in people. Like um, I'd meet with them once a week and we'd set goals. And then uh, sometimes we'd meet out for lunch or dinner and I'd invite other people that were in this circle that was growing and introduce them to each other. So uh, now, we, now I'm creating a, a support system. Um, I, I tried all kinds of things and you remember those 3D photographs that when you looked into them, it, when you looked at them in a two dimensional image, they were just like a whole bunch of dots. But if you crossed your eyes and looked into them, you could see dinosaurs or, or cars or, or whatever it was, but it was three dimensional. So that was kind of, I, I had people try to do that. And when they would, see what the the real image that was hidden in the the uh, photograph was i'd say that's your life you're you're you need to go deeper and see what's really there inside and what you really want to accomplish and so i helped them create that idea that they could that they could recreate themselves or or recreate themselves in a in a better way then that worked um I had other people come in with ideas that were different than mine, that they wanted to be in a coaching position. And I didn't always get along with them. And now I look back and I think I should have been a little more um, objectively open to their ideas. So that was, you know, when you're trying something, uh, you mean that they were they were getting coaching from you because they wanted to be coaches themselves? Yeah, they wanted to be coaches, and they they had their own ideas on it, and I should have been more open to their ideas and worked with them more. But I was developing my own system, so I was kind of closed. So that's something that didn't work. Um, being open to everyone's ideas really is the, the way to be. Uh, ah, I got an idea. Well, let's plus that rather than say, oh, well, I got my own ideas or mine are better, or I don't need to go there, I've already thought of that. So, well, tell me about your idea, let's hear it, bring it out. And, oh, that's a great idea. Wow, let, let me plus that, I can add to that a little bit. And then you're going, you know, like leapfrogging, frogging over your idea and developing it and moving it along. And I didn't do that as much then as I do now. Now somebody has an idea in, in our group, well, let's hear it. So, you know, we evolve along the way. That's, that's really cool. And, and something you mentioned is that, um, that, that show, showing a genuine interest in people r really worked. And, and, and that's something that I've, I've noticed with you is that you, you always seem to be just very genuinely interested in people. It, um, is that something that just kind of came natural or did you uh, did uh, did you develop that or or or? That's a good um, question, Jay. That's a darn good question. <laughs> you know, it started off when I was five years old. When I was five, I lived in a very rural community. My dad had twenty-one acres of, of prunes. We had a prune farm, and you know, back then people didn't worry about their kids wandering or riding their bike all day long. And I had a bicycle and a BB gun and a fishing pole and. Um, I had a lot of freedom. So I was free to move and explore as much as I wanted. And first thing I did is I wanted to get to know my neighbors. And so I went and knocked on all their doors and, and um, I was selling rocks back then. I, I needed to make some money for BBs when I was five. And so I'd find these really pretty rocks along the way. And, and I'd polish them up and shine them up and I'd go knock on the door. And after a while I'd say, oh, by the way, uh, Mr. Tanaway, um, 
That was one of my neighbors. Um, I knew all my neighbors, every one of them, and I'd sold them something one time or another, but I'd say, um, I got these cool rocks for sale. And you can have this one for a penny, or you can have this one for a penny, or you can have them both for a nickel. And I had more nickels, I think, than any kid on the block. And then, uh, so I, I started my own network when I was six years old. I had, I knew where everybody lived uh, within a mile. And um, I knew who they were, what they did, and and I made friends with them. And so that's kind of how I started. And then uh, later when I learned the power of building a network, I drew on some of that early knowledge about you know, really listening to people and what they had to say and looking them in the eyes when you're talking to them and and then learning how to just shut up and, and pay attention and not try to, you know, interrupt or, um, well, I, I, I got stuff I would need to add to that. Well, sometimes you do and there's a time for that, but learning how to listen really is a, a major key in coaching and and so, yeah, and then I've, I developed, I thought, well, you know, I, along the way, I developed this idea that, that uh, what is it that people really want? Let's get to the core, core issues. And to do that, you have to listen and it takes time. And you have to ask the right questions. Like, are you happy with your life? What would you do to improve it? Um, let's write a few things down. Are, are you as healthy as you'd like to be? What can we do to change that? You make as much money as you'd like. Well, what can we do to improve that? Uh, tell me about your relationships. And then listen. People want to talk about themselves. They do. Everybody does. You know, the, the worst punishment uh, known to man is solitary confinement, where you can't talk, you can't connect. We're not designed that way. We're designed to connect. So the Gathering of Lights project just takes people to the next logical step, which is let's all talk about ourselves and get to know each other. Cool. So, um, so, so going back to the Gathering of Lights project, you uh, and, and not to get too political, but you um, you mentioned that George Bush um, talked about a thousand points of light, and that uh, and that he was he was kind of correct with that. Um, what, uh, what, uh, what what did you mean by that? Well, what uh, a thousand points of light, and I can't remember really what what uh, the uh, circumstances were behind that statement. But I think I think in every state there are people that are enlightened. By that I mean they're wa they're waking up to their own divinity, to their own inner uh, inner consciousnesses raising. They're seeing things from a higher vantage point. So. The lights turning on and there's someone home and there are those people all through the country and i think uh the time is coming for the for us to take these lights and, and draw a line from light to light to light and network america in a way that that um, sheds a greater illumination on the communities we live in and um, uh, the fa our families and our you know, wherever we are, we, we can make a difference. And that difference is uh, increased or improved or more developed when, when I connect with you over there in, in Bangkok and, I, and we, we talk back and forth and we resonate and, and we stimulate each other's mental um, construct and are the way we think. And then we go out into the world and we we shine that light. We, we make a difference, and we get a thousand people doing that, and it and it really can wake up, it can wake up a country, to wake up a community. And you don't have to go preach about it. You just go be it. Just be who you are, and your inner uh, luminescence begins to radiate. And people say, "Well, there's something something about that Joseph Dewey. I always knew he was a little strange, but no, I don't know." He's, there's something about him that I'm kind of attracted to, actually, you know, so you can't really put your finger on it, but you know what it is. 
you know, you know what the difference is. Let them guess a little bit, but um, the key is to connect the thousand points of light, kind of like a, a, a puzzle, you know, those puzzles that just have the dots and then you connect the dots and then it creates an image. Well, we don't really know what that image is yet, but we know that if we connect with other players that uh, it'll create some something, it'll create something out of nothing. And so that's, that's, that's part of the Gathering of Lights project is to work with other groups, other people, high-minded souls that want to make a difference in the world. And, and one, of, um, one of my questions, um, you, you kind of touched on it, but, uh, but, as, but especially with the, uh, with the virus, um, it's, it's, it's harder and harder to bring people together. Um, are, are, are you finding it um, easier or harder um, or, or different or? Different, uh, different. We do a lot of Zoom. We do a lot of Zoom. Um, that's how we connect on Thursday night was with Zoom. Uh, Joe does a Zoom class on Sunday, has about 20 to 25 people every week, uh, some of his devotees. Uh, I saw this joke the other day about these, these Amish people and, and somebody asked them, well, how come you guys don't have any, any uh, people that are infected by the virus? He says, well, we don't watch TV. <laughs> <laughs> so they, they didn't know about it. So, you know, they just kind of carried on and they weren't affected. Um, again, there are pros and cons to the media and the way we, we see things. Personally, I, I have a mask. I guess I could put it on because, you know, but I, I only wear, wear it when I have to. Um, it hasn't slowed me down much. How about you? Do you have much of it over there? Um, so, so Thailand's interesting because they haven't um, they haven't had any new domestic cases of of Corona for about four months. Um, so, so basically, like nobody um, nobody except for people coming into Thailand and and then they quarantine them for two weeks. Um, so, so, so a few people a few people every day. Um, in these in these quarantine hotels, uh, we'll get the virus, but nobody like nobody outside of of people returning returning from overseas um, has the virus. So, um, so so life is kind of back to normal um, now. Um, but um, but but they did it. Um, uh, um, they really really clamp um, clamp things down for um, for for a few months. Um, so. Um, so, so it's kind of it's kind of interesting, and and, and Thailand's kind of a um, interesting place politically wise now, which uh, which I which I kind of really can't um, talk about very much, but, um, <laughs> but 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 it's but it's all over the news. So um, they have good yeah. food. Well, have uh, good food. Oh yeah, um, um, and and do you have um, do you, do you like Thai food? Um, I love Thai food. Well, if I had to pick a, a restaurant to go to today, it'd be Thai food. <laughs> I yeah, like the, yeah. the Peking duck and I like the, the soups and you know the the soups with the chicken and the white sauce and the white soup and the ginger and and just the way they uh, they um, season all their, their foods and the rices. I, yeah, I love Thai food. <clears throat> but over here it's back to the COVID thing. We have thousands of new cases every day, thousands. Um, Mostly the old the people are going to die from it. They're usually over 80. Most of the people recover. Some people recover and then relapse. That's that's the upcoming challenge today is dealing with it. And so they're having vaccines developed and that's going to create a whole new controversy. Should I take the vaccine? Should I not? Um, you know, it's a personal choice, I suppose. Who knows what they're going to put in that vaccine? Maybe it'll... <laughs> Brainwash us all. Do, 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 do. You so are, are, are you going to take the vaccine? I don't know. I'd have to have it researched. There are ways of getting out of it without saying, uh, saying I'm not going to take the vaccine. You can ask questions. Does it have this chemical in it? Well, yes, it does. Well, then I, I'm sorry, I can't take it because I'm allergic. Um, 
will it have this effect on me? Well, yes, it will. Oh, I'm sorry, I can't take it. I don't know. I don't know yet. We'll see. I haven't taken it yet. Would you take it? Yeah, yeah, um, probably. But but my uh, my prediction is the the first like six months worth of vaccines um, probably aren't going to be that great. And and especially um, especially in Asia, where like every single country is developing their own uh, their own vaccine, uh, then probably the first like three or four vaccines that I would have access to, uh, they, they may be good, they may not be good. So so my, kind of my strategy is to wait, wait. six months. Wait six months. Let let whoever dies uh, from the vaccine, <laughs> and, and, and then then after a while, you you, uh, you can tell. Oh yeah, this with this vaccine, this vaccine has killed the fewest people, so it should be safe. So so anyway, that's uh, that's kind of my plan. But um... well, you know, that's a good plan. Um, you know, and then just be cautious. Wash your hands. Don't you know? They say, well, especially if you're in a strange bathroom or at the gas pump, you never know who's been there. But, um, you know, six feet social distancing, I, you know, go with that. Be careful, don't be, you know, there is a virus out there, so they say. So I don't know anybody that's died from it or even got sick from it. <coughs> well, <laughs> you just have a strong immune system. Cool. Well, uh, well, uh, I hope um, I hope I hope you keep um, being healthy. So, so I think um, I think um, I think I heard times about uh, about up. Any um, any final any final words or coaching advice or um, article number sixty one that you want to um, share before we wrap up? Well, yeah, always always something. Um, let's see. Well, yeah, you know, uh, I would say the main thing is to find good books, read them, see what your next step is, uh, build your own personal support, empowerment network, and draw from the strength of others, contribute as much as you can, be of service. Um, I taught the 12 labors of Hercules last winter and um, from Aries to Pisces, very interesting stuff. They're the, the labors that each person has to go through to reach um, the intuitive higher mind where you connect with the light of your soul. Uh, the, fir the first labor had to do with uh, Aries and he had an Aries Hercules had to capture these man-eating mares, and uh, so he goes about capturing them, and he gives them to, and he and the the, the man-eating mares represent the uh, wild, destructive ideas that run through your mind, that trample out intuitive impressions, and so you have to learn how to deal with that, and, and how to uh quiet the mind still the mind like through meditation and you have to surrender your lower personality to the light of the soul and listen you have to learn to listen to your inner light so that's the first lesson and then it goes all the way from aries taurus gemini cancer and and each of these labors has this fascinating uh mythology and how he had to rise above obstacles. He had to learn to laugh at himself in Libra. He had to learn to be a world server in Aquarius uh, where he cleans out the Aegean stables. He has to learn to surrender his powerful personality in Leo. And then in Pisces, he learns how to, to be a world savior by first of all, learning to save himself and that each person is self-responsible. I can't, I can't expect somebody else to come and save me i have to i have to save myself um i'm responsible for my actions and i can correct them but there's nobody that's going to come and do my inner work for me that's up to me so if you are interested in any of these 12 labors they're on zoom and you can find them at uh on facebook 
a gathering of lights on Facebook. And uh, they're, they're pretty interesting. And, but in closing, I'd like to share a mantra that, that uh, we use often in um, our, th our Thursday night meeting. It's called disciples. Can I share this? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, I thought I could. And it goes, we are points of light within a greater light. We are strands of loving energy within the stream of love divine. We are sparks of sacrificial fire focused within the fiery will of God. And thus we stand. We are a way by which men and women may achieve. We are a source of strength enabling them to stand. We are beams of light shining upon their way. And thus we stand. And standing thus revolve and tread this way, the ways of men, and to know the ways of God. And thus we stand. And standing thus united, together arm in arm, we face the outer conflict and bring the peace of dawn. And thus we stand. So we stand together, like in a circle. And, and we, we, with our backs towards each other, we're connected. We're empowered. We have the strength of the circle of 12 or 24 people. And then we can look out into the world and know the, th the ways of God, but walk the ways of men. So we are lights in the world we live in, and we're not alone. That's the whole key to the gathering of lights is no one is alone. We're connected with other lights. Well, um, very, uh, uh, very cool, and thank, um, and and that's a uh, that's a great way to wrap it up, I think. And um, thanks, uh, thanks very much for sharing that, and thanks for doing this interview with me um, today. It's been really, it's been really, really cool talking to you. Thank you, Joseph. It's been a it's been a pleasure. You're a great man, and you do a lot of good work on your own. And I want to encourage you to do more of these interviews. I think there are a lot of great lights out there that would love to share what they know with you as well. Cool, well, um, well, uh, thanks, uh, thanks so much and um, I will talk to you soon. All right, happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Thanks.